There is a remarkable group of people out there who are HIV infected that have been infected for decades, have never taken an anti-HIV drug, have normal CD4 counts, which means that their immune systems seem to be normal, and they're entirely well. And those people are doing this on their own. Elite controllers are this really unique set of HIV positive patients. They're about 0.3% of all infected individuals who have this ability to naturally suppress the virus to undetectable levels. And um, we also say below 2,000 copies per milliliter of the virus for prolonged period of times with absolutely no therapy. So they really are just this very interesting, unique set of individuals who, you know, we thought basically held key insights to what makes up an effective immune response to the virus. And we believe we now understand it. Not only do we believe we understand it, we know that there's a, a path forward that is at least hypothetically defensible that we might be able to create those sorts of immune responses in other people. What we're announcing today is that in these people that control spontaneously, that have essentially functionally cured their own infections, that it's the parts of the virus that they're targeting that is critical and allows them to do this. And what this study shows is basically that regardless of your own host genetics, everybody has the theoretical possibility of targeting what we're calling these highly networked amino acids these regions that are critical to the structure of the virus. So how that relates to a social network is that a social network uh, is a way of representing relationships between people. You have some people in the network who are very important. Those people have a lot of friends. And uh, you have others who are sort of peripherally involved. Maybe they have a few friends, but they're not, you know, if you removed them from the social network, the social network would still survive. The important people in the network are those who, if you remove them or if you change who they are, that the function of that social group as a whole no longer functions. And so we have found that applying this concept to biology works really well. And it's, it's a way of capturing the complexity of biology in, in a mathematical way. And so we hope that this is a big step forward into creating a vaccine that actually works. So we really want to do some preclinical studies to test our vaccine design and see that it works. And that would probably largely be in animal studies. And if those show promise, then the idea would be to try to get this into humans initially for safety testing and then perhaps for a bigger program where we test both the protective and the therapeutic efficacy of the vaccine.